Now I want to uh, say a few words about Madam President. Um, as a matter of fact, Madam uh, President uh, is almost everything of Croatia. Uh, you know, you know her uh, from uh, Croatia, France. Uh, the, the world uh, knows you, Madam President. You are <laughs> very <laughs> famous in the world, and I think I think it really uh, became uh, good, and uh, we gave a big applause to Croatia. Uh, for taking this final uh, uh, success uh, with France in the uh, World Cup, because because this this became a very good example that it is not important uh, uh, what the countries are big or small or what, but the important thing is the team, and important thing is people. And when you bring eleven correct people together then you are able to create a global success story. I think Croatia became a very good example of this. And this motivated uh, uh, most of the countries in the, in the world uh, in, a, in a, a very good way. So thank you very much for your leadership uh, in this uh, uh, process too. Uh, I want to share a video of Madam President with you uh, because our uh, Senator uh, in Hong Kong, Andrew Work, worked uh, around 10 days to prepare this video. <laughs> uh, because two years ago, uh, Madam President honored uh, the opening ceremony uh, of uh, the World Congress 2019. And uh, I, I want to share now the intro uh, video uh, of uh, her uh, with, uh, like yes, and, uh, just, just a second, please. Hi. I'm trying, trying to, yes. Uh, it would be much. Okay, I think it is coming now. Uh, Lucy, do you see the screen? from her earliest days, our next speaker knew that she wanted to represent her country to the world. She studied diplomacy in Vienna and later went to Zagreb before being called into her nation's diplomat. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, from her earliest days, our next speaker knew that she wanted to represent her country to the world. She studied diplomacy in Vienna and later went to Zagreb before being called into her nation's diplomatic service. She braved the frozen wastelands of Canada to represent her nation. She was later called home and then went from diplomacy into politics and once again represented her nation, becoming the Minister for European Integration and later the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Even when she stepped out of those roles, she again represented her country by becoming the ambassador to the largest economy in the world, the United States of America. She has negotiated the thorny issues in places like NATO. Ladies and gentlemen, when she returned to politics, she went on to attain the highest office in the land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have with us today Her Excellency, the President of Croatia, Kolinda Grabar Kitorovic. Please. <laughs> Yes, Madam President, <laughs> uh, thank you very much uh, again uh, for uh, uh, joining uh, WBM now as the president of this uh, committee, and uh, I'm leaving the floor to you. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Altuntas, dear Baybars, for this uh, very kind introduction. Uh, and first of all, I would like to uh, greet all of my colleagues here present in this uh, video conference, but also uh, all of you around the world who are watching us today. Uh, it indeed is, is my pleasure and an honor to lead the committee. And uh, I'm so happy that Maybars, you've called it the most important committee, because I believe it actually is to remove uh, um, the inequalities that we still face in the world, but first and foremost, to contribute more to the development of our societies and of our countries. Of course, my background and experience comes mostly from uh, politics, from uh, leading a state, uh, from international relations and international security. But throughout my career, I have also uh, done a lot in terms of providing for circumstances, for opportunities for women entrepreneurs. And one of the stories that I often tell uh, is actually seeing it work in practice in countries such as Afghanistan, which is uh, torn by war and conflict. When I was uh, with NATO, uh, one of the things that I did with public diplomacy is to introduce broadband internet as a means uh, not only for communications and opening up to the world, but also of education and increased business opportunities to a number of universities across the country, but also NGOs uh, and private businesses as well. And uh, in introducing uh, the um, infrastructure for broadband internet, we used to employ local companies. And uh, our policy was always to employ companies where uh, about 50% of employed are women. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there have been quite a few success stories where, where you provide a job uh, or an education to a woman who is able to achieve economic empowerment and prove their equal value to other members of the family, uh, it uh, created a snowball effect. You know, when a father or a neighbor would see that somebody's daughter or wife uh, earn money to buy them a new car or a new TV set, they would actually change their position in thinking about involvement of women in business. And that is, well, that brings also benefit to myself and to the whole family. So what we did see is an increased number of women who were allowed uh, by uh, um, uh, fathers or, or other male members of the household who had prevented them from doing business to actually be able to earn a living, to earn money over the internet, over Facebook and other social media. And um, that is something that always encourages me in what I do and what I strongly believe in. So let me start these opening, um, this, this opening speech with some uh, general remarks and then move on to the obstacles that we still face today. Uh, to the measures that need to be taken in order to overcome those obstacles. Um, and of course, um, uh, speaking about uh, the benefit of uh, empowerment of women or um, uh, empowering of women entrepreneurship in order to create more jobs and to create social justice across the world. As we know, women have led a long struggle in their fight for rights uh, and equality. And our fight continues. Some things are worth repeating time and time again. Women have achieved wonders, but we're still, still not there yet, especially not in some parts of the world. When you look around the room at any major international political or business gathering, when you look around the boardroom, women will still be in the minority. Although our numbers have risen in the last uh, decades, we all must do better. Women are the often untapped power source, agents of peace and security, and agents of economic and social development. Their political participation is crucial for development, good governance, and democracy. This is particularly true for countries and societies, as I said, that find themselves in turmoil. The positive of co uh, contribution of women to sustainable peace and development is irreplaceable. 
when given full and equal access to resources and opportunities, and when included in decision making, women drive peace and development, and women also tend to be more inclusive according to research, which uh, leads to better and more inclusive solutions that will be lasting. And without women, peace is frail and development is uh, unattainable. Gender equality is pivotal for obvious reasons. However, for the remaining skeptics and disbelievers, I will underline a few very specific and sober reasons. The economy and uh, creation of jobs and the development rising standards that we all want to see. Research shows that countries with a higher share of women in executive and non-executive positions in business are more prosperous. There is a large positive impact on the GDP, a higher level of employment, increased productivity and response to the challenges of aging populations and other demographic challenges that we're facing. Uh, at the EU level, based on still pre-COVID research, and I believe that with COVID this also uh, might increase, Improving gender equality can lead to an increase of our common GDP anywhere from 6.1 to 9.6%. Countries where the greatest improvement are possible have a potential of GDP growth of up to 12%. It is clear best gender policies reap best economic benefits and economically successful societies have a simple formula. They are inclusive and their women are empowered. On the other hand, lack of economic empowerment equals lack of freedom of choice. Economic dependency lead women, even in the developed world, into overall dependency, into their reduced social positions and conditions that they live in, and even an inability to escape uh, domestic violence, for instance. Women are often underpaid in comparison to men for the same job and uh, unemployment is greater among women. Mobility in the labor market is often impeded by their right to have a family. In the same vein, young women of childbearing age are regarded with suspicion when applying for a job or a credit for a new a loan for a new startup business. The role of women entrepreneurs has changed over the years in the world. Participation and their importance have been commendable in the um, economic growth and development in the world. The World Development Report um, says that um, women who own businesses show great potential source of future for economic growth and job creation. Therefore, many initiatives uh, in the world by uh, governments, uh, by the United Nations and other organizations, and I believe we're also the appropriate forum to discuss this, have been introduced uh, to promote and motivate women entrepreneurship in developing and underdeveloped countries, uh, just as in developed countries alike. The economic empowerment of women is being regarded these days as a sine qua non of progress for a country, and hence the issue of economic empowerment of women is of paramount importance to political thinkers, social scientists, uh, reformers, um, and all of us who have dedicated our lives to promoting the position of women and uh, uh, gender equality. Women entrepreneurs are credited with their utilization of modern technology, increased investments, finding a niche in the export market, creating a sizable employment for others and setting the trend for other women entrepreneurs. Um, they have also recognized um, that uh, um, we as women have been an untapped source of economic growth. So women entrepreneurs create new jobs for themselves and for others as well. They provide societies with different solutions like management, organization, and solution to business problems, as well as the exploitation of uh, entrepreneurial opportunities. Women today are pilots, engineers, nuclear physicists, and presidents. And yet at the same time, they're mothers, they're sisters, their caretakers and their families. 
If um, that were not enough, they often have to do better and work a lot more than men in order to succeed or to be recognized uh, for the same work that they do. This is an immense burden. However, we continue to prove daily and time and time again that we can do it. Not only are we doing it, we are excelling at it, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Of course, we're not just as equipped as men to be equally represented in politics and in our organization, parliaments and boardrooms. I believe that we are even uh, motiv more motivated. We often hear as uh, an excuse that there are just not enough qualified women who can be executive directors, presidents or board members. Uh, or uh, who can take managerial positions uh, in business or government. We all know that this is simply not true. And this is why Croatia has established a quite unique database of business women, which is uh, at the disposition of the companies in order to sort of uh, plug into this resource and to be able to promote uh, women, women in their business environment. Uh, we another good example from Croatia is also um, the women's entrepreneurship development strategy, which has certainly contributed to the increase in number of women entrepreneurs uh, in um, uh, our country in the recent years. But you know, when it comes to ob obstacles that we face, I have looked at very specific re research that was done by a group of scientists in Croatia. Uh, interviewing women who are highly educated. And uh, it has been proven that highly educated women encounter less obstacles and less discrimination at work. But nevertheless, uh, still there are obstacles um, that are of social nature, such as uh, traditional viewing of women's position in society, such as stereotyping about women's uh, emotional oversensitivity, uh, valuing women's appearance over our knowledge, skills, uh, or abilities, um, lack of gender quotas in many companies and uh, in many political parties and governments, lack of female role models, and this is why uh, the work of this committee is so important. Uh, men's beliefs that women are not as capable as men in performing the most difficult and the most outstanding positions, and women's belief, which is, of course, a very worrisome trend, that they are not capable, as capable as men in performing the most demanding jobs. Then there are uh, obstacles of organizational nature, such as uh, lack of organizational policies and uh, programs that enable work uh, uh, life balance. That is one of the primary obstacles in Croatia, for instance. Um, aversion to employ, train and develop uh, and to promote uh, women to higher levels. Then, um, of course, the glass ceilings that we have all seen and the um, insensibility of organization towards mothers, problems that I have already mentioned, but um, to young parents, I would say, in general. And then there are personal obstacles, um, the most important, again, being work, um, uh, personal life balance, uh, choosing um, the so-called women-friendly jobs and professions rather than venturing into STEM, for instance, personal decision and not to be accepting high, higher positions in order to have enough time for the family uh, and for personal life. Um, stereotyping the role of women um, uh, in the own family. Unfortunately, that happens a lot. Lack of networking, which is a very important factor that especially highly trained and highly educated women note. And I believe that this is also one of the areas where we as a committee and as an organization can do a lot to provide the possibilities for uh, women networking. Uh, in addition, of course, restricting factors for women entrepreneurs uh, in, include access to finance, a lack of relevant education and experience, domestic responsibilities, and access to vocational skills and training. Then also we have the difficulties in marketing the products or, or the services of their startups or their companies. 
uh, and uh, the, uh, especially the entry of women in the rural and uh, isolated areas in entering uh, the job market and in moving their micro um, uh, or a small size enterprise, uh, enterprises to be aggravated and to take a, a, a greater bulk uh, of uh, the market. But now when, when, when we speak about what women contribute, what women entrepreneurs contribute, uh, we also distinguish between different factors, what they do for the, themselves, for um, the society, for, for their uh, families and for so uh, society overall, including their local communities and the global community. And some of the benefits, of course, uh, include rise in the economic status, increased income, increased consumption, which also leads to greater GDP in many countries. Uh, having control over spending, confidence uh, in uh, sustaining the trend of uh, women entrepreneurship, etc. Then thinking personally, it really contributes to one's self-worth and self-confidence, um, to the ability to work in groups and teams, to resolve conflict, uh, uh, and uh, to, to achieve uh, that freedom that a, a woman needs uh, uh, when she is not uh, economically dependent. Also, um, she gets a recognition not just within the family, but also within society. And she uh, becomes uh, empowered and enabled to influence others as well. In terms of social status, of course, it contributes to their positive image, more gender equality, uh, sociability, um, the work of the community, and what I have already mentioned, what is also very important that due to empowerment and motivation, women entrepreneurs create employment for many more women in the community and in their own country. Now, in terms of what we must do to encourage women to get more involved and become the agents of change, before we move on to more specific recommendations later in this panel, I would just like to single out three very, very important areas. First of all, the starting point is a change of mindset. We need to build, build a political culture that is conducive to equal participation of women in politics, in business, uh, in culture, in society, and overall, overall. We need to nurture ambition and stop telling our girls that there's something that they cannot do, that there are me male or female jobs or professions. Let us stop segregating boys and girls into different social roles or professions. It is upon us to change the still widespread um, gender stereotypes. And I absolutely refuse that they're culture-based and that lack of any rights of women is based on culture or religion. These are universal rights that pertain to all members of the global community, regardless of their gender, political, social, economic, uh, religious, or any other background. So stereotypes are not part of one's culture or religion, and we need to remove them from school books, from TV ads, from the media, and from our social life. It is high time that society stop using such excuses for inaction. We need to promote the role of women, but also include men in this process as active stakeholders. Secondly, to achieve this, we need to put an emphasis on education. Education is the best tool against any radical ideologies. It is the best, uh, one of the best tools for self-empowerment. And of course, it is uh, one of the best tools to fight these stereotypes and to allow for the conditions for the inclusion of women. Um, the role of the media is particularly important. They need to balance their presentation of women uh, to that equal of men, which unfortunately today is not the case in most countries. Women in business and politics, to conclude, have to endure a lot, but um, I have learned to deal with uh, what I have been through and move on and am more than ever dedicated to um, make it possible to allow for conditions for a much better and easier life for all of our daughters. 
Um, unfortunately, in this world, they will try to trivialize, trivialize you, discourage you, and patronize you. They will um, find supposed flaws in uh, you, which purportedly only pertain to women. But um, uh, my message to all girls and women is please do not listen to those arguments. Believe in yourself and do whatever is in your power to succeed. And there is more and more people in the world who will help you in that endeavor. And on the final note, um, I would like to close with a story that I pointed out um, a few years back in the United Nations. Croatia's gift um, to the UN um, and one of the symbols of the organization is that statue outside of the UN and the so-called peace monument by the Croatian sculptor Anton Augustinčić. Most people think it's a horseman, a horseman holding a globe, but it's not, it's not a man. Uh, as a matter of fact, the author uh, on purpose put a woman on that horse as leading the world to peace and stability because his own beliefs back in those times uh, and uh, they hold uh, now today with uh, uh, new generations of young men who are mo more open to, e uh, to equal opportunities, is that women, uh, when it comes to peace, stability, uh, development, again, are mo more um, calm, more reliable in that sense, more open-minded and more inclusive. Uh, so um, let us make the symbolism of this horsewoman uh, riding that horse and leading the UN to peace. Uh, let it, let's make it our reality and um, let's make every girl empowered enough to know that she too can hold the world in the palm of her hand. Thank you. So Kalinda, I'm going to start with yourself. The female PM of Iceland recently stated, we must ensure women's participation at the highest level of decision-making. Women world leaders have risen to the enormous challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic in admirable ways. The world has taken note and it is our belief that we will continue to see a greater number of women elected as leaders around the world. Kalinda, when more women are making the decisions. When more women are in power, much can be accomplished. However, we need to be aware that it's taken a long time to get more women in power and elected around the world. What can be done? What are your thoughts? Thank you, Lucy. Yes, indeed, it has taken many years, but I, I think that we are increasing speed and pace and that we are going in the right direction. And let me underline again how important it is to have men involved in this process. Uh, not only do we want to share our, all the rights and responsibilities, but in many countries, uh, men are still those who are lawmakers and who are setting the rules. On a general note, um, society is like a live uh, organism, which needs to be fully operational uh, in order to realize its full potential. Without real equality and genuine uh, equal opportunities as societies, we're actually using only 50% of our capacities, about uh, only 50% of our brains. So um, I, I believe that is also another indication which just simply comes from nature, why we do need equality in all walks of life. Uh, I believe that expanding the network of uh, influential women is important as it encourages more and more women around the world to become engaged uh, on all levels of political, um, economic uh, decision making and uh, in other areas as well. And I am encouraged that what I have seen in this presentation in terms of the specific measures and specific initiatives that we are going to be undertaking in the weeks and months ahead of us in order to create the conditions for that. Uh, with uh, our involvement, showcasing and shining the light uh, on this problem with increased visibility and awareness, uh, uh, we can actually become uh, a very important part of uh, the solution. Uh, 
Also, uh, speaking on a personal note, we should remember that as mothers and as parents um, of boys uh, whom we have to raise uh, so that they realize that they are the ones who will one day uh, support their partners and share their family tasks with them that they will be equal to women in that area that they will again enjoy equal rights and responsibilities and that they pertain to men as well is an important part of our everyday life but uh, in also an important part of uh, our um, uh, motivation and, and and of our mission as uh, uh, those who want to be um, uh, those who want to bring about change uh, in our societies and on the global level. When it comes to uh, more specific issues in terms of uh, empowering women economically and in particular uh, women entrepreneurship and startups, we've already uh, mentioned that there is a uh, need for more knowledge uh, regarding the accessibility to loans. Um, regarding funding programs, um, uh, awareness of government uh, welfare programs, but also stimulation programs for women entrepreneurs, but also awareness of programs of different institutions, organizations, uh, and um, uh, the people who are gathered within uh, WBAF uh, who want to uh, empower women and who want to give them a head start. Um, there is also need, of course, as I mentioned, for more education, for acquiring technical skills and support from uh, family, from local communities and from government. And when we speak inside of organizations, uh, if uh, women are part of um, a larger organization or a larger business entity, of course, there's need to create this um, organization and organization and culture that leads to gender equality um, in core organizational values. There is a need also to um, develop uh, organizational programs that will lead to that. And mentoring as, is an, an, an extremely important part, uh, but also seminars for both men and women regarding their positions within the company, uh, inclusiveness, tolerance, uh, etc. Supporting and sponsoring programs uh, that empower women, both within organizations and within civil society. Uh, that can be uh, done by private entities uh, as well are also uh, quite important. And uh, um, ultimately, uh, especially when we speak of young mothers and uh, when we speak about young parents, financial support during the period when they want to take some time off to spend uh, that with uh, their young ones, uh, with their family, and in order to be able to, uh, of course, uh, expand uh, uh, their um, skills, their interests, and their involvement, not just within the company, but really venture into the area of self-employment and of starting their own business or a startup. Thank you.